very early on in our process that we would never touch the money that came from the rental properties. It was to continue to go a different direction and build the empire. And my full-time job is what we would live and work on. What's, what's kind of been your strategy as it relates to financing these, finding them, and maybe talk a little bit about your perception of risk when, you know, with all of this. Yeah. So I, I'm going to introduce to you, Lindsay and I, and, and she probably won't say this, but we, we have a process, you know, and I, and I kind of took that, you know, those University of Utah football fans that are out there, Kyle Whittingham will tell you, respect the process. And there's a process that they follow. Uh, and Lindsay and I have, have developed that process and it continues to, to morph and get better each year. But we have a process and that's, that's kind of the message that I would share to everyone is you've got to get your own process. Matt, you've got a process. Other people that you talk to, you, you can go and you can learn and we can educate and we can tell you. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you have to get your own process, the one that you feel comfortable with that helps you, you go. And so as, as Lindsay and I were, were kind of young into this and, and, and still understanding, here I am trying to go through, through schooling, working a full-time job, but at the same time, you only have two hands, right? Your two mm -hmm. hands can only do so much work. And that's what I was doing, grinding every day, uh, going to work. But at the same time, I needed to have other hands on the outside that were working for me 24-7, 365 days a year. And that's where real estate comes in, right? The, the rental properties, they're always working for you. Whether you're on vacation or not doing humanitarian stuff, they're always working for you. Uh, and so early on in the process, we started looking, okay, we're going to rent this. We, we consulted with some people. We looked at what the market was. You get your first renter in there. And the goal with the very first house was, and this is where I think a lot of people make mistakes, is the moment they get their first rental property or they start to do that, you change your mindset and you think, oh my goodness, I'm cash flowing $200, $50, whatever it is that you have, $1,000. That Tesla that I wanted, I can now make the monthly down payments on. Well, yeah. guess what? You forget that when the renter's out or it gets destroyed or there's math or you have to do something in there, now you have to make the mortgage plus your Tesla payment plus everything else. Yep. So we made very early on in our process that we would never touch the money that came from the rental properties. It was to continue to go a different direction and build the empire and my full-time job is what we would live and work on. So the rental properties would then grow and, and, and develop. And then once we got to a certain point where taxes and all this other stuff came in, then we had to start being smart with, with what we were doing. So the first rental property, the first couple of years, again, we started slow. You just build up a nest egg. And then once we got to a certain point that there was cash in there, we then used the money from that first rental property that was saved in the bank became the down payment for the second property. And, and then also, go ahead. Just to pause you, I, you know, I think kind of like I, I, we, we talked about at the beginning, like I, I think you guys have done phenomenally well while being, you know, full-time a regular job, but, but sometimes having that full-time job with the W2 income is actually an advantage, right? Because yeah. like you just said, you don't have to rely on the real estate money for the day to day. Right. I, you know, I've, I've talked about this before, but I've kind of, I kind of was the opposite when I started the real estate money, not necessarily rentals, but like real estate activities was what was kind of the paycheck. Right. Yeah, so right. sometimes I was always, and I still find myself in this mode of like, no, 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 it's just the quick money, the quick money, the quick money, but it's the long money that's going to make you super wealthy and build that empire. And so it sometimes is, I mean, if you have the risk profile on the team, like you're talking about, you know, and the partners, it, it, uh, it, it maybe can be an advantage to, you know, to, to, to have that W2 income right along the way. So, yeah. And you're right. And it works for people, right? This is what worked for us. And some people you're right. You can go. And if you put all your time and effort into making that successful, it's going to be successful. So if you want to, because how are you going to feed the family? How are you going to pay the bills? If you don't have a W2 income that's coming through. That was just the route that we took. Yes, and it, and it took a little bit longer. You look at it, we probably could have built, our process was in place, we could have built it faster, but we just did it that way because that's what worked for us. I love this. So keep talking about your yeah. process. So, so you look at that, we had the income, then we were able to come and get the second house and that's where we were introduced to you. Uh, and, and then you helped us get that second. And when we look at it, I have an Excel sheet uh, that my wife and I use 
that we go through that we're able to quickly evaluate a property um, and, and it gives us what, at the end of the day, our cash flow is going to be. What is the cash flow at the end of the day? And when we first started this, um, we kind of looked at it and said, okay, you start with a low number. We have to make at least X amount of dollars to make this be okay for us to do. And that first initial, you know, number set was $200. We thought, hey, if we could, you know, cash flow $200, then we were okay. You look at that now and $200 to some people, you know, you're, you're better off if you get a part-time job at McDonald's or something like that than yeah. you know, take the risk of renters calling you 24-7, you know, doing different things for $200, you know, a month. But you don't realize the appreciation, everything else that comes with owning that house. And after a few years, things start to change. Uh, and so that was kind of the process that we looked at. And as we continued to grow, now you look at this, we have two single family homes that are now dumping money into a pot, right? And if you go back to the process that we were respecting, that we were observing, the goal was you never touch any of the money that comes from this. We live our life off of the W-2 income. Other hands are working for us 24 seven. Now you have two income properties that are dumping money in there. Well, you let a year or two go by, all of a sudden you have enough money for what? Another down another payment one. for a property. Um, and at that point, then you go and purchase another property. And then what do you do? Now you have three properties and then it kind of goes you know, up from there. Uh, and you look at that process and go. And then in between there, obviously there were partnerships that came up, understanding um, you know, how, do you, how do you leverage, how do you go with other people? And that's where we came in with you and, and, and we were able to help with that process. And it works right? It yeah. works. Um, but you have to understand if you do go into a partnership, one, do you trust the partner that you work with? And then when you have differences, how do you work through those differences, right? Yep. You know, we could talk about DreamFlex. There was a couple of times that in your process was different. Ours was different. Yep. But in the end, we come together. You know, you may look at something and say, why? Well, just throw that away. Let's light this place on fire. Yep. You know, that type of stuff. And we're like, no, no, no. Let's keep everything that's in there. We'll sell it on, on you know, a yard sale you know, listing that's out there and, and, and you're learning, you grow from those, but partnerships, you know, they work. You just, again, have to understand how do you get your differences and they come to the medium that they can be. Well, and, and this is going to lead in what I was going to ask you is um, um, about your, your management philosophy. And this is one of these where we, not that we disagreed, we just maybe needed to talk through it a little bit, right? Like I, I got on with my rentals, like, professional property managers. I don't want to deal with them. I don't really care if it costs us just a little bit extra. Like I, we're not, I'm not going to the properties anymore. I'm not taking these calls from the tenants. Now, Lindsay, on the other hand, she, you know, for better, for worse, she's really good at it and she likes managing the property. So I was like, guys, let's get someone else to manage this. I was like, no, I kind of want to manage them. And so, you know, that's where it just, you know, open discussions and conversation. We came kind of, and I was like, all right, well, then we're going to hire Lindsay to be our property manager. You know, it's, so it's kind of like we get the best of both worlds, right? Through communication and, and, and whatever. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that's a hard thing for people. If you're going to get into to rental properties, whether it's single family home or you start to go up to multifamily um, individuals and, and this is to the group listening, you've got to decide, are you going to manage the property or someone else? Um, and you get a lot of these people when they start looking at it and you, you can attest to this, Matt, people will look at it and say, man, I'm going to net, you know, $150 off of this thing. If I get a property manager, it's all gone yeah. you know, because I'm paying them to manage it and, and I can't do it. All of a sudden these individuals get into it and the first phone call that they get is I can't pay rent and you have no experience. What, what are you going to do? Yeah. Or you get a phone call that the, you know, there's sewage, the, the toilet's backed up and there's sewage everywhere. Uh, and so a lot of individuals, it's, it's a, it's a hard balance. And so you have to, you have to, number one, are you a people person and can you handle that? Uh, and if so, then try it. If not, you've got to quickly go and get a property manager or someone that's an expert in that field that can help you be successful. Cause you can still turn a lot of money and have a property management company manage it and do the day-to-day -day things for you.